guys, welcome back. We are on the last of the Oregon Trail Sims. I just combined all of them into one. I wanted to get it kind of over and done with and released because we're gonna be playing soon. So let's just, let's just get it out there. So first we are working on Big Steve Underwood. He is a Sims 3 Sim. Honestly, the name made me laugh, which is why he got included in the poll and apparently everybody agreed. And you know what? He needs to have a life because in The Sims 3, he decidedly did not have a life because he was a ghost who died of starvation, which is fitting for the Oregon Trail. I really did, like his face was kind of hard for me because he had a beard and a hat. And so I really did add a bit more of how I thought he should look than necessarily a perfect recreation. I just, I did my best. He had a very cute nose though. So I was able to get that. Sorry, I keep turning my head and I don't know what it's doing to the sound, but we're, st we're still testing. I'm still working out the mic and I often have to move it depending on what I'm doing. So here we are. What's interesting is, I was trying to find, I had a point. Oh yeah, some people have actually brought him up and have goat shell, but yeah, he's, he's brave, a genius, daredevil, a klepto, and a vegetarian. So I just, I think that's going to be a unique kind of combo in this particular challenge, but I've also, he made me realize that I feel like brave sims should have some sort of bonus. So like they don't necessarily, I don't know, like I kind of want to make traits an optional but important part of this challenge. Cause like a brave sim is probably, they're going to say yes to every random event. They're going to try and ford the river kind of thing. They're not going to pay for somebody to ferry them across. I'm like, no, I got this. I can totally handle this. So it's something that I thought about, but we'll see. I did not give him a hat. I was very sad about it, but I just, I didn't have the right hair hat combos. Plus a beanie. I, I just, he's fine. I am curious if he will end up, per story progression, marrying Erin Kennedy. She's going to be on the same lot and she's going to be a single fam single female sim, so we'll see. Because I generally don't know what's going to happen to the people on the other lots. They're going to be able to kind of live their own little lives. Yeah, I was trying a hat, but I was like, eh, and I really liked this hair because it was really floppy. So I just, I gave up on the hat. He's fine. He doesn't need a hat. He's Big Steve. And then I think he liked the color purple, so I just kind of plunked him in that outfit. He's gonna be like a hired hand. So then we have Aaron Kennedy. I'm pretty sure Big Steve, Aaron Kennedy, and the Funk family are all in one lot, but I definitely could be misremembering, and I don't wanna click away in case it messes up the sound. So we shall see. <laughs> It'll be a surprise to us all. But Aaron Kennedy is a really cool sim. She's actually playable. She's in Sunset Valley. She's Part of the military career but a new kind of resident as well and she typically knows her employer but she also knows anybody who works in the military career so jack bunch is something that she someone that she knows so i might possibly give them a little bit of a friendship she's probably going to be another kind of hired hand a lot of the single sims that i have like added onto the families i'm considering them as someone who was hired because that was pretty common if they a family was going to go on the trail and they had the money and they needed help in general with managing the oxen or if they had like cattle or something like that they would hire somebody to help i don't know about child blinders but maybe especially if that person was already working for the family like in the case of the wolves they have brought along some of their household so yeah erin kennedy is definitely going to be working to kind of pay her way through the trail and if she makes it to the end she, she'll go off on her own so her description does say making friends is like hard for her so again i don't know how that's going to come out but yeah she's a really square jaw which i did get i'm not 100 percent satisfied with it but i got pretty dang close i don't know she just has a really pretty face it's very wide and I just, I wanted to get that. It did say she, have great, she had great eyes and when you zoom in, they are gray, but like when you look in the wiki, just like the small picture, it looks like her eyes are like black, 
which I thought was really pretty, and I mean, Grey's pretty too, but eh. I also gotta give her like a very formal, every hair in place hairstyle. It's not gonna be this one, but I was really excited to use it as well. And then I think, yeah, she likes the color blue, so I do put her in like a little blue dress. Plain, but it works. God, I'm all fidgety today. I think I'm finally, finally gonna build. I got this like little, it's like a mint colored bookshelf thing for my hallway. Cause when you come upstairs, everything always ends up on my desk because you, people just set things down and by people, I mean me. And I don't want things to go on my desk. There should be like a spot. So I'm like designating a spot, but I have to build it. And I've been, I don't know if I've talked about it already. I know that I've been thinking about it because I keep putting it on my to-do list. I'm like, ah, I don't want to do that today. Eh, I don't want to do that today. I still have these two end tables that I started to build and then I needed the drill and my partner had taken the drill to out of, out of state because he was doing something. But yeah, so I was like, oh, I can't do it. And now they've just been unfinished, which I really need to finish them because I have to sell them on Facebook Marketplace because I'm not keeping them. And yeah, which in retrospect, I should have just left them in the box, but I intended to keep them and then now I just I'm like no this isn't right and I'm also dreading that because I don't like interacting with strangers so I'm like Argh. although I guess I can just meet people in like a parking lot that's what people have done with me they've met like a restaurant parking lots we'll see it's it's literally like four screws that I have to finish too which makes me feel so lazy and I'm just like Argh. but eh. So yeah, there you go, there's Aaron Kennedy. Next up, we have the Funk family. We're starting off with Sabrina, who is the wife, mother person. Um, they're kind of described as a bit of like a wreck. They're, they don't really have things together, but she did have like a cool strawberry blonde hair color. I don't really think that I was able to achieve that. I did my best with what I had installed, but yeah, they're just kind of chaotic and they have three kids. And it's just implied that they might not do the best job with them, which again is why I was like, well, they're probably gonna have help. I'm pretty sure Aaron Kennedy is in that same lot. I'm pretty sure, but I could be wrong. But Sabrina is unflirty. So I made sure to give her like high necklines throughout. She's a vegetarian, we'll see. A genius, family oriented and a heavy sleeper. So yeah, and she has just like a very fox-like sort of face. Like it's very pointed and sharp, but she's got like a little nose. And it's kind of long as well, yeah. I'm just looking at it. She has an interesting mouth too. So I did my best with her. I mean, I did my best on all of them, but like, sometimes I feel like saying that when I don't feel like I quite achieved a perfect result because I'm a bit of a perfectionist. She looks cute though. And I think like side by side, comparatively speaking, this is the best I'm probably gonna get in The Sims 2 in terms of results, but she's cute. I'm curious to see what their kids are gonna do. I'm not gonna be playing this household, so who knows what they're gonna get up to, especially if she's family oriented. I might come back to do the survival roles and find out that they have 10 more kids. Who knows? In theory, the challenge is gonna be 16 days, but obviously there can be delays, so it can be a little bit longer. It just all depends on what they roll. Because I don't want it to be like a super easy challenge. I finalized the rules, but I, I'm not going to post them yet because I might change them depending on after I play through it and go, okay, this didn't work. This didn't work. I would like to do this instead. Oh, this looks really fun. Like, that's just how I am. And there's a lot to this. Like it's very role heavy, which I kind of want to try to find a way to use that new mod where the random occurrence scenarios happen like in the game at random but I have to figure out how to modify it first. I don't think it's gonna be super crazy hard, but that would be super nice if I could just put it in the game and then upload that file and you can just install that and then you don't have to roll, it's right there. Cause there are gonna be survival rules. Like after I play through one day, I will go back to the neighborhood view and roll for everybody. Like roll for the wagons to see if they had an event and then roll for individuals depending. So I want a lot of stuff to happen. Like, I don't feel like 
too many events would happen when I would play through the game. I might actually play through Oregon Trail and just like see what I remember. I would have to find a version though because I'm basing this on the 1985 version because that's the one that I played the most because we had a school that did not have a lot of updated things so that's what you got. But that could be fun to play through on stream. Yeah, this is the hair I went with because it was like the most strawberry blonde I could get. I liked that it was really messy. She had a dark lipstick, so I was considering putting like eyeliner and stuff on her too. I, I just gave her red lips, but yeah, like I think she turned out fairly well. She looks like she's a bit harried and all over the place. She doesn't have a job in The Sims 3, but she does want to be like a scientist. Uh, creature robot crossbreeder so I like the idea that she's just kind of an absent-minded scientist even if she doesn't have absent-minded and yeah now her husband Rhett he also has a very interesting face but he was a lot easier for me he's also an unemployed sim he's got just like square but like kind of like a rectangular face like it's egg, the, the, I don't know rectangle that's what I'm gonna go with and of course has those little eyebrows that I just I have given up trying to mimic in The Sims 2 because it's not possible where it's like almost an S shaped and you just you can't do that but he's neurotic he's a good sense of humor he's neat excitable and never nude so he'll be fun and he also wanted to be super popular, which I'm kind of glad when I get like these lifetime witches because it makes it really easy to pick an aspiration. Popularity. Done. <laughs> For some of the other ones, I have to kind of like use my best judgment. And I don't really like that. I would prefer to be guided by who they were in The Sims 3 a little bit more firmly, but I'm doing the best I can. I do need to assign traits that's something that I forgot to do. I want them to have the same traits and I should have all the same traits so it'll be fine. I decided to give them the blue eyes too that had like little dabs of darker blue in them. I just think that they're pretty even if they're mirrored so like the eyes are the same it's fine. I don't care. They're pretty enough that I will let it go. But yeah he's like very wide almond shaped eyes and then just long rectangle. He's very leading leading man facial features here. Of the Sims 3 Sims that I've done so far, he's the only one that kind of seems to be a bit more defined facially. To the point where he just he doesn't look like he's made a pudding. Although I didn't know that he was apparently a reference to Tobias Spunk from Arrested Development. Which there's another character, Gabias Coffee, who also is a reference to that which is always fun when like you come across a reference because again these sims 3 sims i didn't really know anything about them i played the sims 3 briefly but it was always custom characters i didn't really like any of the the townies or pre-maids and so they're they're all new to me like they're all who are you so that's why i wanted to use these sims or the sims 4 sims because i just i feel like they didn't get a fair shake and if they're in the sims 2 we're gonna see a lot more from them so yeah, it's, I gave him kind of a, a bushy, bouffanty hair. Like, again, like he hasn't quite brushed it. He doesn't have the time. And I think he turned out cute. Just gotta pick out a little outfit for him. I think he liked seafoam green. Or no, he liked just green. So yeah, we're on to our last sim now. This is Yumi Sakamoto. I was gonna create uh, Leighton and Sam in Body Shop, but I liked the idea of creating them in cast instead. So I just created Yumi. And Yumi is a very pretty sim. Like she's an elder, She's uh, she lives in Sunset Valley. She lives with her son, Leighton, and Leighton's son, Sam. I believe Sam's the son. I could be completely wrong, actually. No, I don't know. She lives with Leighton and Sam, and she's not, like she wants to help him, like clearly she wants to help. It says she wants to help her son raise his toddler, freeing up her son's time so he could find a new mate would be a fringe benefit. So she's kind of got ulterior motives for helping. She wants her son to be remarried and in a stable little family unit. But I like the idea of she doesn't necessarily want to be taking care of Sam and Layton forever. 
Yeah, apparently her eyes are actually supposed to be very dark green. I didn't read that before. I'm just reading it now. So I did not do that. I gave her black eyes because that's how they appeared in game. But I, th I think it suits her better. Like I like the idea of very dark green, but I also don't have a very dark green and I know that. So it's fine. But yeah, she's just, she's an interesting looking Sim. She's got like oval, but like wide oval. And her cheekbones are kind of low. And again, she's, she suffers from pudding face, but yeah, I still, I still like her. She might be one of my favorites, I'm not gonna lie. And then I did end up giving her the Dolores dress, which I wasn't thinking about it. It's a little booby, it's okay, but like, grandma's a little booby, it's fine. <laughs> and I don't know what she's gonna end up doing, cause I can't remember, I don't think I have any like, elder male sims. I think she's the only elder, which I do have, I believe I put in, there's like a handicap for elders. Because it would make sense that like they would have a harder time making this arduous journey. Just like the toddlers are going to have a built-in handicap because they can't really build body skill. So they too are going to have problems when it comes to doing certain things. I really wanted to give her uh, like a very slick, sleek, well put together hairstyle because that's what she had in The Sims 3 and just based on reading about her, like she's neurotic, family oriented, she's inappropriate, but she's also a perfectionist and neat. So she would really have like a sleek hair and this is the one I ended up going with and I really like it. So yeah, let me know what you think of these Sims and if you're excited for me to finally play through the challenge, I do eventually plan on making a video for the rules like I did for the Unlocking Neighborhood challenge just so that if you want to have the rules in like a verbal kind of way rather than just written down, you guys are going to have that. But I want to play through it first, make sure that it works, make sure that it's not too much as well because I get overwhelmed with like crazy challenges like the Medieval Charter Challenge. I'm still super nervous about playing. But yeah, we'll see. So thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, definitely give it a like and I will see you in the next one.